everyone, it's Diana Minerva. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. And today I'm going to share a make with you. It's for this new look pattern, 6651. And we're going to be making this wonderful dress, version B right here with the short sleeves. And what we're going to be using is this gorgeous Minerva exclusive range viscose chalet in crane dance. Now, isn't that a wonderful design? Beautiful shades of soft grey and a dusky pink. It's a really unique pattern. I think it's going to make a really pretty dress. Now, everything will be tagged below should you wish to sew along with me today so you'll have everything you need. Wash and prepare your fabric before you get started to save on any shrinkage later on. And when you've done that, take a tape measure, locate the sizing on the back of the packet, and when you're sure of the perfect fit, we're going to go and cut our pattern pieces together. So let's go and do that now. Here we have our pattern pieces for our dress. So this is your bodice front. Here is your straight grain. You're going to cut two pieces. Make a note of the circles and the notches. Here we have the bodice back. For A and B, you're going to cut one on the fold. The fold line is here. Make a note of your notches and your circles. And then we have our sleeve piece for version B. This is a straight grain, you're going to cut two, make a note of the markings. Here we have the skirt pieces of our dress. This is the skirt front and this is a straight grain. We're going to cut two pieces, make a note of the markings. So you want these circles here and the notches. Here we have the skirt back and this one is cut on the fold and the fold is here. Again, note your markings. Here we have your placket pieces. You're going to cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. Make a note of the markings and the buttonhole placement here. Here we have the casing piece. You're going to cut one in fabric. Note your circles and your notches. This is the centre back here. Here we have the neck band for A and B. You're going to cut two of fabric and one of interfacing. Make a note of your markings. And again, your collar, two of fabric, one of interfacing. Note your markings. And finally, the pocket piece. Here we're going to cut four. This is a straight grain. So you're going to cut four pieces and cut them as two pairs. So now we're ready to begin making our dress. First of all, you want to wind half of your thread onto your machine spool and check your machine needle is sharp. I'm using a universal, a standard size needle 70 today for this fabric. You may wish to test it on a piece of scrap fabric before you begin. Now, our first job is to stay stitch around the neck edge pieces. So if you take your front piece, first of all, and we're going to stitch from the shoulder to the center. So that's in the direction of the arrows. 1.3 centimetres away from the edge and that's just to keep everything in place and stop it from moving around. Let's do that now. And the back pieces. Next you're going to pin your shoulders and your side seam. So right sides together and we're going to stitch this with a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. Now at this point we're going to stitch a line of ease stitching around this top curve of our sleeve here. From this circle at this side all the way around to the other circle at the other side. This is to help you ease in your sleeve when you apply it to your armhole. When you've done that we're going to stitch our underarm seam. Now as you can see I've already overlocked my edges. You can zigzag or overlock your raw edges as you prefer. At this point we're also going to hem our sleeves. So first of all you want to press under six millimeters of the edge like this and then press under the remainder. So it's 3.2 
in total. So 3.2 centimetre hem on your sleeve. When you have your hem pressed up, hem it close to the edge. Now we're going to apply our sleeves. So you want to turn your bodice part to the wrong way and your sleeves the right way around like this. Then you're going to slip your sleeve inside your bodice and we're going to match our underarm point here and here we have one notch to the front. Now if you have the wrong sleeve you'll know because your notches won't match up. So just grab the other sleeve. So here we have two matching two And then at the top of the sleeve, this point here, you may have a notch or a little circle, whichever way you've marked it from your pattern, is going to line up with the shoulder seam. Put a pin in just there. And once you've got those key points in place, you can pull on these ease stitches to ease in the rest of your sleeve. So just distribute those evenly on both sides and then pin it the rest of the way. Stitch your sleeves in place. Now you're going to take your casing piece and we're going to press under one centimetre on the long unnotched edge. When you've done this we're going to pin it to the inside of our bodice. So we've got the wrong side of our bodice here. We're going to place our casing piece on top of it like this. We're going to match our notches. So we can just pin it in place so it doesn't move around. We're going to pin it all the way along and then we're going to stitch close to this pressed edge that we've just done here. When you've done that we're going to baste along the bottom here to keep these raw edges together and then stitch along your broken line which was indicated on your pattern piece. Now you may want to mark this on with chalk and a ruler if that makes it easier for you. So stitch along this top part first where you've just pressed it under. Now before you base down your casing and do your central line of stitching, I would suggest stitching down either side of your seams here because sometimes what happens is when you push your elastic through it gets caught behind here. So it's always best to stitch this down on the edge and you can always take those stitches out after. So this is what I'm going to do now at this point. Now stitch your central stitching line which forms your casings. Now we're going to take our skirt panels of our dress and we're going to apply our pockets. Now you want to take one of your pockets, make sure it's the right one because we want right sides facing and we're going to line up our markings. So we have a notch here and a notch in our pocket, you can just see here. And then also a marking here and here. So we line those up, pin it in position. Then we're going to stitch this in place down the seam line. From here to here. Do this on the fronts and the backs with all of your pockets. Stitch your pockets in place. Now at this point you can overlock down the side of your pocket that you've just added or you can leave that while later if you wish. Now what we're going to do is we're going to push the seam towards the pocket like this and we're going to understitch. So with the seam facing towards the pocket we're going to stitch just a couple of millimetres away from this seam that we've just created and this is just going to keep your pocket from rolling outwards when the garment's finished. Now we're going to stitch our skirt front to our skirt back and at this point we're also stitching around the pockets. So we have our back piece open like this with our pocket facing outwards. Take your front panel and place it on top and place your pocket on top like this. Now we're going to stitch just to here at the top of the pocket. So we have our marking here 
we're going to stitch down to here back tack then we're going to skip over this part that we've already stitched and then stitch from here all the way down to the bottom of the skirt when we've done this we're going to go around our pocket and then we can overlock or zigzag finish the raw edge Now pin your bodice to your skirt here at the casing. Make sure that you've lined up all your side seams and your central back point and then we're going to stitch this in place. Now using your elastic guide you're going to cut two pieces of elastic the same length and we're going to thread them through our casings. Now it's best to do it at the same time, that way you don't get any bunching as you're pulling them through. Now stitch across each end of your elastic once you've pulled it through to secure it. And when you've done this and you've made sure that your gathers are evenly distributed, to save it flipping round later on while you're wearing it, you can, in the side seams, just stitch down there invisibly. So you're stitching in that ditch there. So make sure it's all even before you do that. Now press back three millimetres on the long unnotched edge of your band for the front of your dress. You've applied your interfacing and now we're going to stitch it to the front of our dress with a one centimetre seam. Now try on your dress and we're going to stitch across the bottom of the placket here. So we've folded it back, we're going to trim it and then push it to the outside. Now this is where you will hem. So I'm going to overlock mine and stitch it. If you wish a deeper hem, you're going to need to take it deeper there. So do check the hem length and that it's right for you. Do this on the other side and then hem your dress. We're also going to stitch down our placket. So you can either do that visibly, so top stitching on the inside, or you can stitch inside the ditch just there. So I'm just choosing to top stitch mine just here on the placket, making sure that you catch in the bit that you folded under underneath. Apply interfacing to one collar band and one collar piece. Then you're going to take your collar pieces, one with the interfacing and one without, right sides together. And we're going to stitch around the long unnotched edge and up the sides. Now trim your edges and across your corners and turn your collar through. When you've done this, you're going to press it and baste your raw edges together. Pin your neck collar band to your dress, matching your shoulder point so you have circles here. It needs to overlap by a centimetre at each end like this and make sure you line up your central back point. Now stitch it in place. Press under one centimetre on your facing piece of your neckband and then what we're going to do is we're going to sandwich the collar that we've created between our two neckband pieces. So here is my neckband, here is my collar and here is the facing piece over the top. So as you can see the collar is sandwiched between the two. This is where it curves round at the front. This is the bit that we've just pressed up. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to stitch through all three layers we're going to come up this side here round this curve along here all the way down the other side now when you've stitched your collar between your two bands fold this one back so here is where we turned under the bottom unnotched edge here and now it's hiding this seam where we've joined the faced band to the shirt part of the dress now I've just pinned mine down what you can do is you can stitch through all the layers and you can stitch it in the ditch from this side here or you can do what I'm going to do and what I'm going to do is I've pinned it all the way along like this and I'm going to slip stitch it from the wrong side so it's going to be invisible on the right side so I'm doing that by hand now Now we're going to create our buttonholes. So I've remarked mine because sometimes it's hard to see them once you've been working on your garment. So I did start marking them with chalk, but it was quite difficult to see on this fabric. So what I've done is at the bottom of where each buttonhole will start, I've put a pin there. So that marks the start of the buttonhole. And I've done that all the way down. And here at this point where your elastic is, your two casing parts you have got two button holes there and that is to make it more secure because obviously you'll have the elastic pulling at your waist so you've got two buttons there and two button holes now we're going to create our button holes now i've moved mine down ever so slightly because i felt with this size button they needed to be just a little bit closer together so i've moved each one a little closer and i've added in an extra one so rather than using 10 buttons, I'm using 11. I just feel that this will just make them a little closer together and make it feel a little more secure. So that's entirely up to you. And now I'm creating my buttonholes. Now do consult your manual because all machines are different and I'm using this particular one because I like the function on this one. So you may have a foot like this and you work through the steps individually or your machine may do it all in one step, just a one step buttonhole. So do consult your manual. So if yours is like mine, you will work through the steps. So that is the first step, which makes the bar across. And then the next step goes back. And then you go across again to make another bar at the top. And then on this particular model, you come back down straight the other side again. So yours may work like this, or it may do it all in one function. And I do prefer this method. And there we have our buttonholes. So continue all the way to the top. Now we're going to sew on our buttons. So what I like to do is lay it out flat and I tend to start from the bottom. So here is my first buttonhole here. What I do is I mark where the button needs to go. So you can do that with a chalk or with a pin. So there's the centre of my buttonhole there. So that's where my button is going to need to be. So I'm going to sew it on there. And I like to button up each one as I do it. And then that way it saves it from pulling out funny as you're working your way up the dress. So if you button each one, you can check that it's all lying flat before you do the next one, rather than doing all of them. And then finding that when you get to the end, that some of your buttons are in the wrong place. So we're going to button it up like this. Make sure that it's flat before marking where the next button will go. So 
So here is the finished dress. Well, I hope you've enjoyed sewing along with me today. Next time, why not try it in the sleeveless version? You could use a gingham, a chambray, a poplin, maybe a linen blend. Lots of different options to choose from there. If you've made this pattern before, please let us know in the comments below and remember to include any photographs. Also, why not take a look at the Minerva Craft Club to get 10% off all your orders for a whole year. And you can also create a free account with us to share in our wonderful worldwide sewing community. If you like what I'm wearing today, this is another one of our exclusive fabrics and this one is called Inky Grove. This pattern is New Look 6407 and I will share those items below also in case you're interested in making this. Well that's all from me for today, but I hope to be back with another sew along really soon. Thank you so much for watching, bye for now. Bye.